talk a little bit about uh, creek fishing and uh, some of the tackle you're going to need today. And uh, first thing you're going to need is a uh, good rod and reel, uh, something to cast easy, cast small baits. Uh, preferably a spinning rod and reel or a spin cast rod and reel. Uh, I personally use a uh, six and a half foot medium light action uh, spinning reel, six pound test. Uh, it's basically what I use when I'm creek fishing, pond fishing. You only need uh, something to carry your, your tackle in. And, uh, most convenient, easiest thing I've found is just to get a back tack. As you can see, it's got pockets here, clippers, uh, fishing license, hooks. Uh, and then you can put your lures in these little uh, shell cases. Uh, plastic cases and you just uh, slide the cases down into the tackle bag. And then you can uh, carry the tackle bag around with you throughout the day. And that's going to stop you from uh, having a lot of weight on your back. Now, we uh, fish uh, with little rattle baits, uh, some little crank baits, uh, jerk baits, like this, uh, maybe a little popper, and a uh, deep water crank bait. So you can catch a lot of fish on your your, your hard baits, but uh, you definitely don't want to overlook a couple things. And uh, one of them would be live bait, which I use this uh, number eight circle hook, and uh, I'll cast a large minnow right up into the pool or the rapids. Sometimes with a split shot, sometimes with just the hook. And uh, the circle hook, you really don't have to set the hook on it. You just pretty much let the fish uh, engulf your bait. Another thing that you don't want to look is uh, the jig. Uh, these uh, eight ounce jig a lot with a uh, little trailer on it. And uh, I'll get one of them out here and show it to you. Eight ounce jig, and I'll uh, use a uh, little plastic frog trailer. Because on the back of that, that works great. Uh, you've got the inline spinners, uh, rooster tail type lures. They uh, tend to work as well, too. This is a little eight ounce job here. So uh, that's some of your lures, and then you get into your uh, four inch worms. Tend to work excellent for your uh, small mouth. Uh, we also have some uh, little grubs, uh, four inch grubs. Uh, three inch crawls uh, also work very well. Uh, finesse worms. So you kind of want to have a variety of stuff uh, to throw out, but they definitely do not overlook the plastic baits. They're, they're cheaper. Uh, you just need some hooks, some sinkers. Uh, start throwing them. Texas rig, Carolina rig, whatever your preference is there. Uh, so we do that a lot. Creek fishing. The uh, backpack is invaluable for carrying your tackle around. That makes it so much more convenient and light when you're on your back. Uh, another thing that we do is uh, we tend to uh, try to plot out where we're fishing at. And uh, one thing you can do is uh, go to your Google on your computer. And uh, you can actually map out a uh, creek, and uh, I'll just pull up one here and uh, show you what I'm talking about. It. But uh, you can actually look at the creek, you can see where the uh, uh, 
favorite channels are the uh, the Rapids, uh, Little Islands, uh, and, and then you can actually zoom right down on there. And see, this is showing you your riffle areas with your little backwater here and here. You know, so you can actually plot this out. And then you can uh, say, well, I'm going to put it up here and I'm going to wade down here. See, so you can plot that out. That's very, very neat little tool to use when plot out creeks and uh, rivers. And uh, you also want to uh, monitor your river level. Now this is the Little Miami River in Milford. The uh, flood stage is 17 feet. As you can see uh, on Wednesday, May the 2nd, it was 19.35 feet. It has started falling, but when you get way down here to May the 7th, you're still around 7 feet right there. We've been catching fish out of the river anywhere from four to six feet, seven feet. So you really want to monitor your river level. Uh, one for safety, and uh, two, you'll start getting an idea of how the fish are biting. Uh, rising water, they usually tend to get tight to structure uh, closer to the bank. Uh, and uh, falling water, they usually go to the first deep drop off uh, stationary area. So, this is all stuff that you want to take into consideration before you uh, actually head out onto the water. So, uh, that's some tips that we have there for uh, watching your water level, uh, getting your tackle ready, uh, portability of it. Uh, if you fish in the spring and it's a little bit cooler, you might want to consider getting a pair of waders uh, just for the coldness of the water. In the, in the summer, I tend to use just a pair of shorts and you know, shoes. Just kind of hop right down in there and start waiting. But, uh, you don't need a whole lot. These little crankbaits catch a tremendous amount of fish, different species of fish. And, uh, in the rivers and creeks around here. So, uh, if you get you a nice little variety, something you can cast, a spin cast, spinning rod reel, a little backpack, you uh, plot it out on your map and uh, watch your water level, especially. And uh, I think you'll have a lot more success and uh, a lot more uh, fun on the water catching uh, large mouths, small mouths, spotted bass. Uh, there's just such a variety of fish to be caught out of these uh, creeks and rivers that uh, you're going to you're going to have a lot of fun. So uh, I hope you can take some of those things and advice and uh, give it a try next time.